dear students today i will discuss in continue in continuation with the previous one i will discuss the plural diseases and copd i am professor mohinuddin chisti uh, please follow the class the plural diseases the what are the plural diseases the inflammations plural effusions pneumothorax and tumors what is inflammation of the plural pleura it is called the pruritis or pleurisy it may be the serous fibrinous serofibrinous and important is suppurative or empyema and it also occurs hemorrhagic pleuritis and usually it occurs in metastatic involvement of the pleura now it comes the pleural effusions what is pleural effusions abnormal accumulations of fluid in the pleural cavity it must be more than 15 ml is called pleural effusions but until 200 ml of fluid collection in the pleural cavity it is not detectable by x ray if the pleural cavity is filled with the non inflammatory fluids then we call it a hydrothorax if accumulation of pure blood then we call it a hemothorax if the pleural cavity is filled with the milky fluid then we call it the chylothorax so pleural effusions may be exudative or transudatives you already know what is exudates and what is transudates in general pathology so exudates must be protein level more than 3 grams so the pleural effusions may be benign or it may be a malignant conditions so you see the if the fluid is collected then you can see the pleural effusions so what are the common causes of pleural effusions so in our country in our text you must say number 1 is the tuberculosis tuberculosis is the cause of pleural effusions most common cause others common causes are bronchogenic carcinoma pneumonia and pulmonary infarction right now the country the whole world suffering from the corona virus so what happened so the lung problem is due to the pulmonary infarction occurs why infarction occurs you know in the general pathology what is infarctions localized abnormal or sudden occlusion of vessels why sudden occlusion of vessel occurs most common it may be the thrombus or embolisms what are the other Com, com, common causes are lymphoma sle if there is a liver abscess burst into the lung cavity pleural cavity and it may also cause the congestive cardiac failure to cause of pleural effusions if the pleural cavity is filled with the abnormal air then we called it a pneumothorax so we can say the pneumothorax abnormal abnormal accumulations of air in the pleural cavity it may be spontaneous it may be traumatic it may be therapeutic pneumothorax so spontaneous pneumothorax is very common what happened a spontaneous rupture of the alveoli mostly in case of emphysema 
asthma, tuberculosis. And traumatic cause, trauma to the chest wall or lung or surgical operations. Therapeutic pneumothorax previously in the treatment of chronic pulmonary tuberculosis in which air is introduced into the pleural sac. You see that if there is a pneumothorax, then there is the collapse of the lungs. So, the total lung capacity will be the decreased. So, there is a dyspnea. Then one common questions may ask the what are the tumors of pleura. Primarily, the tumor of pleura is a major thelioma and secondary tumor is metastasis from other sides most common the lung and breast. Major thelium is a tumor that developed from the covers of internal organs known as major thelium. Most common area affected of the lining of the lungs that is plural cavity. So, 90 percent of the major thelioma is asbestos related and those people who work in the asbestos factory then asymptomatic or no symptom up to 20 to 50 years. But if symptom occurs, it may be the chest pain, shortness of breath, plural efficiency, hemoptysis, wheezing, then what we do for diagnosis? We do the chest x ray. So, the major thelioma microscopically have three patterns the epithelioid patterns resembling the adenocarcinoma, sarcometoid patterns resembling the fibrosarcoma and mixed patterns, it is about 20 percent. So, if you see the picture of major thelioma, it looks like a malignant tumors, grossly as because the tumors have a irregular irregular margins and infiltrate into the lung tissues. And if we want to establish the diagnosis, so first of all we do a x-ray, then CT scan or MRI followed by biopsy and histopathology. So, next is an important subject is obstructive lung diseases. Obstructive lung diseases is characterized by increase in resistance to air flow. Why? Caused either by partial or complete obstructions at any levels. So, what are the obstructive lung diseases? There is today you must memorize these four diseases and it is very important for viva. You may ask what are the obstructive lung diseases? You must say chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchial asthma and bronchiectasis. So, if you cannot answer this in our country the obstructive lung disease then you will be in trouble. So, another one parameters or the test, the spirometry, we can diagnose the obstructive or restrictive lung diseases. So, vital is the force expiratory volume in per seconds versus forced vital capacity ratio if less than 0.7 or 70 percent then generally indicates there is a airway obstructions. 
so obstructive lung disease. So, now you see the spirometric graph so that this is the tidal volumes, total inspiratory capacity, total vital capacity and this is expiratory force vital capacity and force expiratory volume. If the force expiratory volume this area is normal is 80 percent to 120 percent. Force vital capacity is also 80 percent to 120 percent is normal. So, if this force expiratory volume, force expiratory volume and force vital capacity ratio is more than 80 percent, then it is normal. The patient is normal. Next, we see the another flow charts by seeing we can diagnose the disease. You see the chart, if force expiratory volume and force vital capacity is less than 70 percent, if yes, then obstructive pattern of disease. If no, that is not less than 70 percent, then it is normal or restrictive disease. If the force vital capacity is less than 80 percent, if it is yes, then it is a restrictive pattern. If no, then it is a normal. Another, it is completely normal, so or something vascular disease is present. So, another is diffusing capacity of lung for carbon monoxides. If less than 70 percent, if yes, then pulmonary vascular disease. If no, completely normal lungs. If the force vital capacity is less than 80 years and then is total lung capacity is less than 80 percent, if no, then it is normal. If yes, there is the obstructions. Then again, the diffusing capacity of lung for carbon monoxide is less than 70 percent, yes, interstitial lung disease. If no, the chest wall or other cause of lung, other cause, neuromuscular disorders. So, in obstructive lung disease, if the force vital capacity is less than 80 percent, the pure obstructions. And again, diffusing capacity of lung for carbon monoxide less than 70 percent, yes, then it is emphysema. If no, then it is asthma or chronic bronchitis. So, by seeing this flow charts, we can diagnose emphysema, we can diagnose asthma, chronic bronchitis or mixed lesions or it is a normal. So, now we have to characterize what is restrictive disease. Restrictive disease is characterized by reduced expansion of the lung parenchyma due to and decreased total capacity, lung capacity, such as the restriction due to the chest wall disorder, interstitial lung diseases. What restriction to the chest wall disorder? You see the next year the kyphoesclerosis. You see the picture, this is kyphoesclerosis. So, there is a restriction of the disorder, restrictive disorders. See another picture, this is poliomyelitis. Then you see the severely obese. Have you seen such type of obese lady or male? Probably not in Bangladesh. But if like that or a little bit less, then what should be the treatment? Treatment is bariatric surgery is vital, otherwise she will not survive. 
he or she will not survive. Another cause is the pneumothorax, lung diseases, pearl diseases, pearl effusions. So, there is restrictive. And the next is in a chart, we can see what is chronic bronchitis. So, where occurs? The bronchus. What pathology is there? Mucous gland hyperplasia and hypersecretions. What are the etiology? Tobacco. Tobacco smokes and ear pollution. Main symptoms? Cough, sputum productions and inflammations in case of bronchitis. What happened in the bronchiectasis? You see the table, you will find the anatomic site is also the bronchus, but pathology is airway dilatations and scarring. What happened? Why this happened bronchiectasis? Persistent or severe infections and main symptoms is a cough. Purulent sputum. Why purulent? The sputum is infected, then it is a fever. So, then next is the asthma. It is also the anatomic site is the bronchus. Here in bronchitis, there is a mucous gland hyperplasia, but in case of asthma, it is a smooth muscle cell hyperplasia, excess muscle productions and inflammations. What etiology? Under undefined etiology, sometimes immunologic cause. So, in case of asthma, there is a episodic, not continuous, wheezing, dyspnea, and cough. What happened in the emphysema? The site of lesion is the air sinus. What happened? Pathology? Air space enlargement, alveolar wall destructions. Why occurs? Tobacco smokes most commonly. The main symptoms? Dyspnea, that is difficult breathing. What happened in the bronchiolitis? Here we either bronchitis and what is bronchiolitis? In bronchitis, the anatomic site is the bronchus, but in bronchiolitis, the site of lesion is the bronchioles, inflammatory scarring and dilatation and obliterations. Another cause is tobacco smokes, air pollutants, and the same cough and dyspnea. Then you see the picture bronchitis this inflammation of the and soiling of the bronchus, this area and bronchiolitis, inflammation and soiling of the bronchioles. So, why dyspnea occurs? It may be the chest cause, COPD, bronchial asthma, pneumonia, interstitial lung diseases, it may be cardiac cause or it may be the metabolic cause, anemia, uremia, diabetic ketoacidosis. These are the number of diseases causes the dyspnea, not only the respiratory diseases causes dyspnea. So, next the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, it is characterized by airflow limitations which is chronic, slowly progressive, not fully reversible. It includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis and diagnosis is confirmed by a simple test. What is it? A spirometry and COPD is predominantly caused by smoking. Risks of development of COPD environmental factors. Tobacco accounts for more than 90 percent cases, 95 percent of cases. Indoor 
or outdoor air pollutions, recurrent infections, occupational exposure to fumes, dusts. So, host factor is genetic factors as for example, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency most likely the cause, airway hyper reactivity. Now, I will discuss about the bronchial asthma. It is characterized by chronic inflammatory disorders. Recurrent what happened causes recurrent episodes of wheezing, chest tightness at night or in the early morning. It is reversible and between attack the patient is virtually asymptomatic. What are the cause? It may be the genetic cause, family history, family members having bronchial asthma, allergens, indoor and outdoor allergens, environmental allergens, house dust, foods, eggs, crabs, irritants, tobacco smoke, vehicle smoke. So, these are may be the causes. If you see the what actually happened in the bronchial asthma, if you see the pictures, you will see the normal airway. In case of bronchial asthma in attack, this is the obstructive airway. What happened? Cons contracted smooth muscle, smooth muscle becomes contract blood vessels infiltrated by immune cells, decrease luminal diameters, you see the luminal diameter decreased, excess production of mucus, inflammation and swellings. So, the airway is obstructed in case of bronchial asthma. Just you see compare the picture, this is the normal and this is in attack airway. So, other causes is the common cold, upper respiratory tract infections. Then important is bronchial asthma sometimes occurs as psychological factors, anxiety, stress sometimes causes the respiratory distress. So, you have to say the what are the types of bronchial asthma? It may be the allergic, extrinsic or atopic je kono ekta name daka jay extrinsic or intrinsic non atopic exercise induced some persons have no problem he is going to he is doing exercise then asthma develops drug induced that is he is taking aspirins for other causes that is respiratory distress starts asthma occupational asthma so due to some chemicals so, extrinsic asthma the most common type and classical example of extrinsic asthma is increased IgA, IgE mediated hypersensitivity reactions and it usually begins in childhood and triggered by environmental allergens. A positive history of asthma have in the family. So, the total serum IgE level is increased in extrinsic or atopic asthma. What happened in the intrinsic Ig level is normal. So, non atopic the skin test results usually negative. Family history of asthma is not less common. Respiratory infection due to viruses are common triggers of non atopic asthma. Inhaled air pollutant, sometimes exposure to cold or even exercise may triggers the intrinsic or non atopic asthma. So, occupational sometimes chemicals those who works in the laboratory they formally hides 
if he use the formaldehydes then he suffers from asthma if he, there is a exposure of fumes epoxy resins or plastics he suffers from asthma so this is occupational the what you advise you change your occupations to be free from asthma now in one phase in table if we want to differentiate the asthma in extrinsic and intrinsic age of onset is childhood in case of extrinsic and in case of adult it is a intrinsic personal history usually present in atopic year and absent in case of non atopic so iga level is high in case of atopic and normal in case of non atopic A skin prick test usually positive in atopic and usually negative in non atopic and associated bronchitis nasal polyps is associated association present in non atopic but usually absent in atopic asthma so again if you want to classify the types of asthma atopic non atopic exercise induced drug induced as for example aspirins and occupational asthma so if we want to say the what is pathogenesis or what happened in asthma eosinophils is the key inflammatory cell found in almost all types of asthma other inflammatory cells mast cells neutrophils t lymphocytes are also present and in asthma yaru a remodeling what happened sub mucosal fibrosis hypertrophy of the bronchial glands and smooth muscle cell hyperplasia occurs you if you see the picture of a normal layer way and you see there is no inflammatory cells but in the asthma you see the inflammatory cells macrophage neutrophils eosinophils mast cells lymphocytes so the packed in case of asthma but normal way there is no inflammatory cells uh, today this is end of this class and thank you to you all and please see the lectures and follow with the books thank you to you all